Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to use Actix Web, which is a web framework for Rust. So if you look in the cargo.toml, which I'll link in the description, I'll be using handlebars for templates, Surde and Surde JSON for serialization and deserialization, and Tokyo because that's what the Actix Web async runtime uses, which I'll show you later. If you look in the bin basics, we'll just go over the basics. So here you can see we pull in the Actix Web runtime, which is an async runtime. So the thing about Actix Web is we create an HTTP server, we create a new app, and this app contains multiple services. So let's basically look at the home. You can see we pull in the git macro from Actix Web, and this means match on the slash route only for the git method, and then return this hello world string. Each Actix Web service must return an impl responder, but since the string implements responder, this will work. So let's look at this. First, we need to run the web server. So I'll be using Cargo Watch. You can just look up how to install this. Watch is the project for any changes. And when you do make changes, it runs this command in the string. So since we're running the basic server, let's just do bin basic. Now you can see the localhost 8080 is returning the hello world that, that we returned in that function. Let's look at taking in variables for a path. So here you can see we have this greet, and then we take in a name variable. And this name variable will be passed in as a web path. And then you have to put the type of the variable, which will be a string. Then we just return a new string saying hello, and then the name that was passed in. So if we go to like greet John, then this will say hello, John. Now, if you need to do more complex stuff, you can actually return your own HTTP response. So here, the HTTP response implements responder, and we can set a status. So in this case, I set the status code to be OK. And then I set the body to be a string, hey there. And also, since we're using the Actix web, which like I said, it uses Tokyo, here we sleep for one second. So I'm not using the standard library sleep. I'm using the Tokyo sleep to match the async runtime. Here, this manual hello needs to be converted into a route because we're not using the macro to do it for us. So we say route and then the route that we want so in this case hey and then the web method that we want to use use this dot to converter and pass in the manual hello function if we go to hey you can see it waits for one second and then it shows let's say you want to have a group of services here we do just that with dot service and we pass in a web scope that we get from actix and then the group route that we want so in this case we want slash operation and then for each of these services, they'll be prepended with slash operation for their route. If we look in the operation.rs file, you can see we have several services. So in this case, there's this multiply service. This takes in a web query. The query is the path query. So for example, if you go to operations, multiply, everything after this question mark is part of the query. So we want to pass in a query matching the num struct. If we look in the num struct, we derive deserialize. So Actix can deserialize it. We pass in a first value and a second value, and these are both strings. So let's just first try to pass in nothing. Here you can see it'll say that we're missing the first field. So if we add that, so first is equal to three, and then we also add the second is equal to, let's say five, it will then return this result. And you can see this matches what we're looking at. So we get the first value from the num struct, and then we get the second value from the num struct, and then we multiply them together, returning the result. Let's say you want to use different methods, like a post method. So then you would just specify post instead of get. And here we are parsing JSON body and same with using the same num struct. So in this case, we need to post JSON to this route. And in this route, we return this operation struct. If we look at this operation struct, we derive serialize, meaning this struct can be serialized. And then we also implement the responder for the operation. The body must be a box body, which we import from the Actix box body. We use Surde JSON to convert the struct into a JSON string. We create a HTTP response, which matches the box body. We set the content type to JSON and then return the JSON string. If we try to use this route by posting to the localhost 8080 operation add route, specifying the content type as JSON with the JSON body, you can see it returns the serialized struct. Let's say you want to have a custom 404 page, then we can set a default service and then a web route to this not found to this not found function. And this not found function is in the not found module. So if we look at that, 
here's this function and it takes in web data. So now what is this web data? Well, if you look on the HTTP server in the app, you can see we set app data and that is what this is putting in. So we create a handlebars registry and then we register where our templates live, which is in the templates folder. Then we store the handlebars inside the web data struct and then pass that into the app data. Now every single route can access this handlebars variable by using the app data. And that's exactly what we do here. So we get the handlebars from the web data. Then we use that to render a not found route, which is in our templates folder right here. And this will return a h1 tag with the URL. We pass in that URL variable by creating a JSON value with the request URI and converting that to a string. Then we return an HTTP response with a status code of not found along with that handlebars rendered HTML. If we go to just a random page, you can see this is what it returns. The cool thing with the app data is it can actually be modified on each request. So here in the data bin, which is in the source bin data, I create a app state struct that will be put inside the app data. And this app state struct has a mutex, meaning even though the server is running multiple threads and many requests are happening at the same time, we can take out this counter and actually modify it. To do that, we take this counter variable that we've created, we move it into the HTTP server, and then for each request, we clone it, and the app data is sync and send, so for our handler, we can actually get it out, lock the mutex, get the counter out, increment it by one, and then return the counter result. If we run our data server, then visit the page, you can see it returns one, and then if I refresh, it'll continue incrementing up, because that's what we're doing right here, we just increment the counter by one. And that is an introduction to using Actix Web, a very powerful indeed web framework for Rust. Thank you for watching.